Okay, so welcome to my presentation on computer vision. Um, how do you move this? Oh, that is interesting. There you go. No. Okay, so um, what we're gonna go through in this presentation, um, I wanted to discuss first why computer vision, why I like it, why I think you should like it, why it is being so talked about in the present, why it's such like a, a you know, such a researched field um, at the moment, and then go through the history of it, where it started, uh, where it was a few years ago, what's the direction of it, um, what to expect. And then I wanna go through the process of how you actually implement computer vision. Um, that's gonna be the main body of the presentation and that should be pretty cool. I got a few uh, things prepared for that. And then um, the applications of computer vision, uh, which are many, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go through them at the end of the presentation. So, I just wanted to quickly introduce myself in case you don't know me that well. Well, my name is Rafael Mendizabo with the you know accent there in the A. Uh, I am a CS student here at Notre Dame, um, computer science. So I chose this topic because I have um, some background in robotics. So when I was like in uh, elementary school, this friend was like, hey, like you like Legos, why don't you come and, you know, check out these robots that we're building over here. I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. So I joined robotics since then. And um, from then on, I just stuck with robotics throughout uh, the end of elementary, then like middle, even on to high school. And throughout all that time, I was just like, you know, what we would do is, well, robots, what they do is interact with the physical world, right? So you get all these sensors, you got, you know, it would be like, if you wanted to see if there's a wall in front of you, you know, use an ultrasonic sensor. Or um, when I was in, in middle school, we, I we got into this competition. It was a soccer competition um, where the robots, they would be like about this size. They would try and find this um, infrared ball. And that's how they would find it and try and, you know, score it, you know, typical soccer. And the thing is, the year after I, I moved into another competition, which is the one that you can see in the picture there, um, they switched the competition, they removed the infrared balls, and they just said, okay, now it's just going to be a plain red ball. So I think that just like shows even more like, you know, the, the direction where, you know, all this is going, where we're trying to make computers smarter, like more, more human-like almost, you know, um, where they see the world more like us. And, you know, I think it's pretty cool. So welcome to Computer Vision 101. Uh, so computer vision is a very, very broad field of computer science. Um, as I kept researching this, I just, you know, I thought I knew all about it. And then I found, oh, it's got more and more and more. Uh, but I think that's just, you know, really, really cool. You know, you got AI involved, you got machine learning, you got abstraction, you got um, even more constant concepts than uh, those. And I, I thought, well, this is the question that, um, that it, it really responds and that is, how do you make a computer see the world the way we do? Um, because as you know, computers, when you give them an image, they're just looking at a bunch of pixels. So, you know, that's why I added that the, they're the mimic human vision. Like, are you really mimicking human vision? Um, you're trying to, so that's what you're really trying to do when you do computer vision. You're trying to get the computer to see the world as similar as to how a human does, try and interpret things the way we do. Uh, however, we've gone through millions and millions of years of evolution. You know, our eyes are super good at, you know, identifying objects, being able to know, okay, that's a rose and that's a uh, cat you know, which, you know, to us just sounds obvious, but to a computer, you know, you gotta, you gotta go through all that, those years of evolution and, you know, in a computer in a, in a matter of seconds sometimes or minutes. So, um, why computer vision? So first of all, I think it is extremely cool. Um, the more I read about it, the more I thought 
it was even cooler. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's all about helping the computers understand what their surroundings, as I mentioned. Um, this is something that is just applied, it can be applied everywhere. Um, like I, I mentioned, I list over there, like you can use them in like AR, medical procedures, uh, transportation, security, that's a bit creepy, you know, you, you hear about this uh, um, camera, security cameras, just like, you know, taking pictures of you, being able to like, you know, okay, Rafa Mendy Sabo, welcome to this store. Um, and just so many, many more. So just because it's such a field that's just been, as I've been mentioning previously, um, so the, being, like it's been developed a lot and applied so many places. Um, I thought it'd be really cool to talk about it. And, you know, that's another reason why it's being developed, right? Because it can just be applied in so, so, so many um, fields and places. So I'm gonna discuss a brief history of computer vision. So how do we get to the point we're at right now? So in the 1960s, uh, Larry Roberts, he was a, um, a student, a grad student, PhD student at uh, the MIT. And he wrote in his uh, thesis that, you know, he, that how he thought that a computer could, you know, start looking at images and interpreting them as 3D objects, you know, because you're given 2D, how do you make that like into 3D? So it was mostly theoretical and it focused on like images, like the ones you see on the right, like there that I, that I put. So it's not really, you know, real world scenarios. It's more like, you know, just a ball, just a square. Like it's not really what you're gonna see like, oh, what is this? This is a glass. Um, so it just stayed there for a bit. It was just mostly discussion of how we're gonna do this, like which mathematical models are we gonna be applying in order to, uh, identify these figures. And then, then in, in the 70s, late 70s, uh, specifically 1978, um, this guy uh, named David Marr, he uh, wanted to find a way in which computer vision could be applied to the real world, not just, you know, the figures there. And he developed a different method that what it did was you would take it, it was like a three-step method. And what you do is you take a 2D image, and then from what you see, the characteristics in those image, like shades, patterns, um, edges, you're able to draw a 2.5D image, that's how he called it, like somewhere in between 3D and 2D, where you are able to highlight those, those three-dimensional features. And then from that 2.5D image, move on to a 3D image. And um, I added that quote in there that I found in a paper that it's like from the paradigm created to us by Mar and no one can drive us out. And this is because at the moment it was so good, so revolutionary that people were like, you know, we, we kind of want to go somewhere else, but, but you know, this is just good. Um, and he had its limitations, right? And that's what I'm going to discuss next. Oh, another thing was, um, edge detection and segmentation. It was also like big, like a big push in the 1970s, in the uh, late seventies. And um, I don't know if you know what segmentation is, but it's just, uh, you just take like an image and you're like, okay, this is, this area is like a car, this area is like the road. So you're just like able to like color different things, separate it. Um, so the limitations by Mar, Mars paradigm were that it was just too complex for many applications that they envisioned using this. It was just too complex. Like what you would do is you would always be taking this to the image and turning it into a 3D model, but you don't really need that always, right? Like when we think about um, say an, an, uh, a car trying to look at what's on the street, like you don't need a car to like, okay, I'm gonna take this and then turn it into a 3D model and then actually do something with it. Like you don't, you don't need that. So um, that again, bringing back the quote that I mentioned like in the past, like that's why many uh, researchers wanted to move on from, from Mars um, paradigm. And 
eventually they did. And this is the current trend that we are seeing today in uh, the research of computer vision, which is purpose, uh, purposive vision, which is just goal-driven algorithms. Okay, you wanna see what's in the street. Okay, you don't really need the 3D model. You're just gonna be able to implement this thing that is able to spot whatever without the need you know, for a 3D model. And you know, different applications as well. So this is why CV ended up being so closely merged with like so many um, similar computer science um, fields like image processing and computer graphics because like now like image processing um, in case you were wondering how different that is from computer vision that just means like oh you take an image you output an image like you don't um, you don't actually do much with it you just uh, like transform an image so how does it actually work so if you look at that picture uh you yourself are probably wondering why and what is it actually like well we can you know we're so good with vision as i mentioned earlier like we can look at oh it's a squirrel it's got a phone why does a squirrel have a phone we don't know but it's also got a mask you know it's 2020 um you know irish and then notre dame banner that's probably going to a notre dame game probably tailgating because of the the color um how does a computer make those conclusions right like you see those rtp values like you know when you when you have a what the computer actually if you took this image and you gave it to a computer it's like okay i see a bunch of numbers like it's just a matrix of numbers um in case you didn't know those are um, rgb values that's what the computer actually reads uh just red green blue and with those three colors you're able to form all of the you know possible colors and um so how do you make this like how do you make sense of these numbers and you know what you want to do is you want to look at these numbers and start making uh the finding things in them you know like you look at this um little table that i put in there and you might already be able to tell okay the ones on the left column they seem to be like pretty high the ones on the right they're pretty high as well the ones in the middle not that high um so if you took that 45 and you just you know looked around it you could make a lot of conclusions about what's going on around it and in this way you're able to tell okay there's probably an edge in the left column there's also one on the right column um not really many curves here but it's pretty much the same way in which you're able to like start identifying these things but now how do you actually do this like how do we um, actually compute the fact that the left is, you know, weird, well, uh, different from the middle one. So as I mentioned there, just look around, like, what do you find around your pixel? And this is where the fancy terms just keep coming, and that is convolution. Um, convolution is a mathematical process that identifies if there's like, you know, in um, differences between the uh, pixel values. So what it does is it takes this little matrix called the kernel. And what kernels do is they're like, you could call them like filters. So the little kernels, if you multiply your, um, like your three by three um, space around the pixel by the kernel, use a dot product, uh, you're going to end up with a different value that I can, like a transform value, um, which in some way, like in some times, it will like blur it, it will like show edges, it will do different things. I'm going to um, discuss that even further in the next slides, but anyone have any questions on this? That works. Like things are going to get more complex by the but you know, as we move on. So if you have like any questions, let me know. Um, Cause this is like the base, it just builds on itself. So, so basically just summary of this, you just try and show that there's like something going on around it with this kernel using convolution. I actually have a question. Yeah, go ahead. They say, um, well, I guess like over here, they take the horizontal values and kind of like add them in like multiply negative one. Why don't they do them like horizontally? Like, is there a reason why it's like 
vertical or like is there another process that does it horizontally where they do like negative 102 plus negative 52 plus negative 113 plus 94 plus 47 plus 108 so there is one and so you caught it <laughs> so we're going to discuss that in the next uh, the next slides um actually i'm just going to move ahead okay <laughs> so the the um the when you do like a kernel so i'm just gonna go back actually the kernel that we see here it's as you said it's like horizontal right so what it, that is gonna do it, that's gonna show you um all of the horizontal edges this is a kernel that's gonna identify all of the horizontal edges so then you're gonna have like different kernels that are gonna be gonna they're gonna be able to identify different kind of uh like features in an image so there's gonna be you know one that's gonna be uh one on top and then negative one in the bottom and that's gonna give you the vertical ones oh wait i have it switched that always happens um so, how do they deal with corners mm -hmm. what how do they deal with corners corners yeah well that is a bit more complex um <laughs> you can have something like imagine we have like um Top row, I mean, yeah, top row, that's one. And then right column, that's one. And then everything else is negative one. Okay. So you're like, do those kind of combinations, able to like figure it out. There was, there's like also ways in which you can know um, isolated objects. And that is just like, say the middle value, you just com completely compare it to like everything that is around it. And then that way you're like able to spot those isolated values. So, once you take okay i'm just gonna that, that did that uh, clear it up okay so once you take that kernel and you apply it to the whole image that's known as convolving and in this case the the horizontal values that we were talking about the the horizontal kernel if you see like high magnitudes that's most likely an edge you know you can even like dim it that's what i did in the um in the things i added on the right um i just dimmed whenever like the the um magnitude was uh small just make it stronger when it's uh darker and here i actually um did a horizontal one and then applied a vertical one as well so it's like both of them and yeah so i actually, I actually mentioned it there the horizontal and vertical kernels and you're also able to identify isolated figures and so because all this is really acting as a filter like you see the image on the top is it is different than the one on the bottom but in a way they're telling the same story right so it looks more like a filter and that's really what you're doing with this convolutions when you're when you're convolving an image you're trying to filter it you're trying to as I, as I mentioned before, like, there's some that are going to blur it. There's some that are going to make edges super clear. There's some that are going to make, um, you know, be able to like, um, whatever is like a curve, it's going to make it even more noticeable. Um, so, so when you talk about a convolutional layer, which is just like these individual filters applied to a whole image, you're really talking about like a filter, you know, in simple terms. And then, fancier terms, uh, convolutional neural network. Once you have all these layers going on, you just stack them on top of each other. So um, this image on the right, actually, it's super, super helpful for understanding how, like what's going on. Um, I just like the first layer, what it's doing is it's taking um, those edges and it's able to highlight them and make them more visible um, or even noticeable to the computer. You know, so they're going to have higher values to like all the things that are not edges. And then another layer that's going to be like highlighting corners and contours. And then you build on that and you are able to like identify individual objects, you know, as they become more isolated. And imagine you were applying this to a face. So the first layer, you would be like, okay, you got basic things going on. And then you're able to like spot the corner, as you can see, you know, the ears, you can see the, the eyes. And then the third layer that would be like, okay, I see the eyes separate 
from the mouth. Like each eye is separated from each other. I see the ear separated from, you know, the rest of the um, facial, um, you know, the, the other things in your face. Um, any questions on that? I think that's more or less straightforward. So all this, once you put them all together, that's known as a CNN, um, which again is just a network of these convolutional layers that we were talking about earlier in the presentation. So machine learning. Uh, so how do you make sense of all that you're looking at? So you look, okay, we got, we just isolated some eyes. And you will look at them and you're like, okay, those evidently look like eyes, but how does a computer actually know that's what an eye looks like? Um, so how did you learn that? How do you know a book was a book and a cat was a cat? It was, you know, just through looking at things. You don't really remember when you, you know, learned mo uh, most of those things, but it was just observing the world around you. So one day you were like, okay, this is, this is a cat. But then you see, yes, let's say you saw, um, I don't know, a German Shepherd and you, you saw a poodle and you, they're like, oh, both, both of those are dogs. And you're like, what? You know, they're so different, but both of those are dogs. And in that same way, the computer has to know um, what is like the different array of things it can expect in a dog. Like what are the main characteristics? And you just, you know, keep giving it that information. You know, you're like, okay, this is a dog. Okay, that's pretty cool. Then you just show it another picture. This is another dog. And you just keep fitting the picture, uh, pictures until uh, it's able to give you better conclusions of what is going on in the image. So you might be wondering right now, like, so the more you show it, the more it learns. I mean, there's a point when like, are you really getting more if you just keep fitting, you know, more and more information into the computer? Um, so I have a question. Yeah, actually. So how does it know, like, I get that, like, you feed it information, like, over and over and over. Like, if you feed it a thousand pictures of a dog, like, a thousandth one picture, like, it knows what a dog is. But how does it recognize what a dog actually is like does it store like what does it actually store to recognize that it's a dog like i'm sure it doesn't store those thousand previous pictures and like compares that one picture to all the previous thousand like what does it actually store to compare so you can think of it like like patterns like say a face how does it know a face from from another thing like whatever and it's able to look like what are the main components you're looking for you're looking for you know eyes you're looking for a nose that's you know situated in this area of the, of the, of the face you're looking for you know a mouth and even let's think of it this way how do you know a smile from like when you're sad so okay. in that same way you're able to like store okay when you're like this you know when you're you're, when you're smiling you're most likely happy and if you keep feeding that information to that computer like you give it different smiles and it's able to store that information that the pattern for a smile looks like this and the pattern for being sad, you know, looks whatever. Um, then you can, you know, bring that same um, process to like how a dog looks like. So it's just, it's just most, it's just patterns, you know? So does it also store like color? Like, like let's say like I fed a thousand people and then like I show it a purple person, like, does it just look at like the shape of the, I guess like object, or does it look at like color and like those kinds of details too? So as I mentioned earlier, not all algorithms are equal today. They're most like applied to, um, you know, what are you trying to use it for? So if you wanted to know colors, like you could, you could highlight, you can make like a, like a requisite, like if it's not purple, it's like whatever. Okay. Um, so just that, it's just like layers basically. You just add your filters and you're able to like find whatever you want. Okay, so so back to the question. If you show it more, do you learn more? Um, well, not necessarily. So 
imagine you had okay so i i got this picture from the default powerpoint thing uh so if you have like a smiley face like you look at those three images and you're like well that, i know you took the same image you just you know expanded it and then flipped it but if you gave it to a computer all of those are different images you know they they they're not equal so if you fed the computer those three images you would be able to expand you know its understanding of what a smile looks like they would be considered different images right so you don't necessarily have to like you know just feed it endless different smiles for it to know it's a smile you can just you know be creative with what you got like you don't really it's always going to be better if you're google and you have access to like all those images and just feed those images but if you were like trying to develop a um like your own algorithm or your own process um this is like stuff you could be able to do and another well i just wanted to discuss ways in which you could apply this to your projects or or whatever you were working on um if you wanted to apply computer vision, you can use APIs. APIs are white, like they, they are all over the place today. Um, they like this process of actually detecting what objects are, you know, a dog from a cat. People have done it multiple times. So if you want to skip that part, just move on to, you know, the actual application that is possible. Um, that is actually what I'm going to do with my demo later. I'm actually going to use the, the Cloud Vision API. So just so you know, that's like a very common thing. Just use the, the APIs that exist today. But if anyone's up for a challenge, you can always, you know, build your own machine learning algorithm. <laughs> so, oh, we're moving a bit fast, but that's fine. So the applications of this, uh, of computer vision. So facial recognition. So you know, 2016 or maybe 15, I don't remember, Snapchat, everyone was like, you know, with the dog filters. That was that was computer vision. Um, you know, all those filters, uh, you got to know where the eyes are, you know, where the mouth is. If the mouth was doing anything, you know, if there were any changes in the patterns of the mouth. Um, facial recognition, that's like just like also applied in so many different places. Like I also uh, put security in there. You can also, I know like some places are replacing just physical IDs, which is like, just your face. Well, you know, your iPhone does that, right? So also just like security places. Um, then self-driving cars, I think that's like one of the coolest applications of this. Um, you know, you got, you got Tesla, you got other startups that are just completely focused on, um, on self-driving robots on, on computer vision and then product scanning this is something that i think a lot of us don't really think of as computer vision i mean as i was reading i was like that well that's not the coolest but you know that's another application of computer vision um also qr scanning for example that's another application of computer vision anytime you like look at you know bars that you have to um, scan you you're looking at computer vision and you know this this really brings it back to when we were discussing about those initial algorithms and how like they were based on 3d models and you can see why it's been driven more to like a goal driven algorithm right because like why would you need a 3d model for a bar for that right um and then content moderation this is you know when you have got when you're like say facebook and you got millions of stuff being uploaded to your page every every day um how do you moderate whatever is going on in there so just apply this um algorithms that are able to like identify whatever you might not want to see in those images or media or whatever um x-ray analysis so this is actually pretty cool i read that apparently there's algorithms that are able to like look at x-rays or whatever like also look at um i don't know how those are called but the ones that like look at how a brain looks like uh, how it's doing and you're able to like identify patterns that might mean that like dangerous illnesses are being developed like you're able to like identify very early stages of cancer or even like threat of cancer even before it's like developed this is all like also with computer vision 
and then user experience. I also read, you know, a very cool, um, somebody suggested this, that what if you had like, you know, your phone acting differently on um, how you're doing, how your expression is. Say like if, if your phone was like, you know, you look mad, like maybe I shouldn't be throwing all these notifications at you. You know, it's just like, you know, not, not something that should be applied maybe, but you know, just, just think about how computers could be more intelligent and how they um, interact with people, with the users, depending on how the user seems to be expressing himself or herself. Um, so, so yeah, and there's just many, many more applications out there. They're really endless. This was just like the tip of the iceberg on some things that I found really cool. Um, so I have just been speeding right here. I just noticed because now it's time for the demo. And with that, before we move on to the demo, any questions on everything like all we've discussed? Because that was that was pretty much the you know the body of the presentation. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so you know how sometimes when you're logging into something, you have to oh I forgot what they're called, but they have their own name. Like sometimes they ask you to select images. Um, like out of a grid of images, you're like, oh, select the traffic lights or something like that. And that's supposed to, it's like a safety feature, right? It's supposed to make, it's supposed to make sure that you're human and not a computer. So where do you mm -hmm. think that is going to go in the future if computers are able to hack into that? Well, that is interesting. So I would, I would say that at some point, well, not really at some point, but I just think like, I'm, you know, a solution that you could bring in there would be say you you actually use like say your um id for your iphone it looks at you and it's like well this clearly looks like a human you know you can even move around it's like yeah it clearly looks like a human like i see the irises i see you know the mouth moving whatever um that's just like one thing i one, one thing i'm thinking of not that it's a final solution but definitely that's something that you could get around of so so security is going to be pushed by itself really um as computer vision keeps you know getting more and more and more um developed you're also going to have to you know catch up with that the same way that many systems are just move like developing you know in other places of security right like as um hackers just become better at like being able to you know leak all this massive amounts of information you gotta be able to protect those information that that information even better so i don't know it's just you know a creative answer um it really could go in many ways but that's just one thing that i thought about just you know maybe just checking if it's your face or not like if you're real so i think we're gonna leave the rest of the questions for the actual um end of the presentation i'm just gonna move this to my demo oh or actually zoom huh. where is it oh wait give me a sec mm. oh there it is okay sorry about that So this is a picture that I showed you earlier in my presentation with my teammates at a at a competition. It was a championship in, in Houston, Texas. And I fed it into, this is only the demo. So this is just the tip of the iceberg of what this can do. Um, so I fed it into the demo of the, of the uh, Google Cloud API. And it was able to find every single face in the image I mean, visible faces, right? The ones over here in the back, well, those are not, they're just, the quality of the image is not that good for, for you to spot that. But look at this. It's able to look at a face and be like, that guy looks happy. He also doesn't look like he's angry. Neither surprised. And these are just like all conclusions that you're able to make, that a computer is able to make with, um, you know, the patterns that you're, that it's learned you know, from looking at many, many faces. And 
it might be worth it just throwing this out. I think it was something I forgot to mention during my presentation. But another way in which computers are taught is they are manually told what things look like. Like a guy, sometimes this, this is something that some people do. Um, they just, somebody just sits down, takes a, like a bunch of images and just like starts like classifying them. Like this is a cat, this is a dog. And the computer just like, you know, just labeling them until the computer sort of knows, okay, just gonna compare all this information with whatever you're giving me. So this, those processes are also like autom automated sometimes. Just, just wanted to throw that out there because I, I forgot to mention it during my actual presentation. But yeah, I mean, I think this is like also super cool. It's also able to like, you know, give you a confidence level, you know, based on all the information it has, like how sure it is that it is what it's saying. Um, individual objects as well. Like pants, top, like it just knows all these different things. Um, look at this. I gave it an image with the name pick.png. It was able to know this is, you know, my robotics team, community, true competition event. It was a competition, it was a championship. In fact, it was a championship. So all this is information that the, uh, that this API was able to, you know, figure out just by, just by itself. Also, you know, be able to find all the text that it's, that, that it finds in here. Different colors, you know, maybe if you were uh, talking about, like the, bring it back to the question that you asked earlier, Jacob, about the, the colors, like, you know, you can also identify the colors and just be, just based your, your um, uh, conclusions on that. And yeah, with that, I will just open my presentation again. And just be open for questions a bit early from when everyone else finished. But yeah, if anyone has any questions, fire, fire away. I'm gonna ask another question. <laughs> um, Go ahead. So you said that there's people that like just kind of feed in information, like it'll feed in like a picture of a dog into a computer, like a picture of a cat. Like, is it common for someone just to like look up a thousand pictures on like Google images and just like tell it to go like iterate through like emit each image at a time and just say like, this is a cat. And like by the end, like there might be like a hundred faulty images, but like it has 900 good ones to go off of. Like, is that common or like they use that route? So I am not a hundred percent sure on that. I don't actually read that, but I would guess yes. Um, <clears throat> actually, Rayan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Google Images has been a playground for that API that you just yeah, used, yeah. Rafa. Um, so they actually use all of Google Images to train their computer vision API. Um, so people post these images, tagging them cats and dogs and whatever. They come up in the searches and like by the amount of clicks, like you're, you have, you get confirmation that it's like a cat or a dog. Exactly. And then they use that data to like train their model. Exactly. So Crazy. that's why like companies <laughs> like Amazon or <laughs> Amazon or like Google or, or Facebook, you know, they have all this information right. that they don't really like, if we wanted to do it, we would have to like pull up, like pull out all this information. Mm -hmm maybe even label it ourselves if it isn't but those those guys are just you know they have it so they're it's easier for them to like automate those processes mm -hmm. i think Vinny had some questions no yet yet you asked my you asked my main question so so that was good i'm good now <laughs> okay um as far as like the security concern, what do you see Rafa as being some like main security concerns in the future and, and ethical concerns in the future for dealing with computer vision? Well, I, I will begin by discussing ethical concerns. I think those already exist, mm -hmm. um, right? Like the fact that I, I personally don't feel comfortable walking into like wherever, like the street and like I think being able to say, okay, this, this guy 
that I just saw, I just took a picture of his face and I compared it to like a database I have and it looks like Rafa. Mm. So it sounds like, you know, dystopian stuff, but it's like stuff that is doable and mm -hmm. has been done. So right. I think the eth ethical concerns, like, you know, they exist and that's going to be something that's just going to be keep popping up. Like right now, um, computer vision still sounds like super like not something that brings you you know maybe negative thoughts when you think about it mm -hmm. but it maybe in the future there might be like a you know a scandal or something as you know people find out how you know pe they're getting their facial data used right right um so there's going to be definitely concerns on that um and then for security I mean, it's just the question that someone asked there is kind of similar, right? Um, where it's going to go with it. Um, I mean, I would say that in a way it's pretty, you know, it, it's really linked with the ethical concerns, right? Um, I don't, it's just really an ethical, like an ethical discussion, what you're going to do with, with this technology, especially in terms of security. Um, cause in a way, you know, that's just like, okay, linking it to your official document, uh, government documents, like, you know, I, I wouldn't mind that personally. It's like, okay, Rafa walked in here, whatever. Um, now if it's like used for monetization of my behavior, maybe I wouldn't, I would mind it more. Um, but I think it's just up to everyone and it's definitely a discussion that, you know, is worth having. Okay. I like and add to that, I actually, like, I remember, uh, I think it was maybe half a year ago or something like that. Maybe it was more. But, like, there's this company that, like, specializes in, like, facial recognition. And, like, it's fine on its own, but, like, they basically were contracted by, like, the Chinese government to, like, basically help them profile minorities. And so, like, mm -hmm. that's what they would use for, like, surveillance on those, on minorities, just, like, that were out in public. So, like, it's kind of scary because it's already being used with like not a right. uh, beneficial purpose in mind sometimes. And like I, I just think of the example that of the backup cameras that couldn't con um, detect black people. Um, uh, I think that was like a huge thing too, um, just because they trained like their model on like white people and and not black people. So that was like insane um, to me as well. Yeah, good discussion here. <laughs> There are also like some models like on a, on a smaller scale, but there was this article that I was reading and it was kind of a similar thing, but it was like just in the bathroom, like the soap dispensers couldn't detect like darker palms. Mm -hmm. um, so, so like this guy was like saying that like it would take him multiple tries to get the soap dispenser to dispense soap because it didn't read his palm as a palm. Um, mm -hmm. So things like that. But also, like, I think that it's just really interesting how everything's going with computer vision because there are some, I don't know if you read up on this, Rafa, but there are, like, some really cool, um, like, AI in, like, in South Korea, they're implementing, like, robots that can just um, tell if, if, whether or not you're social distancing yourself. So, like, it'll, oh. like, tell you, oh, you're too close. Um, to this person and it also like reads temperature and things like that mm -hmm. and then also I know in there's a hotel I think it's in China um, and like it uses robots from Alibaba and and it's it's basically like a personless hotel like you just go in like the robot like scans your face it knows who you are like tells you where your room is and like you open up your room just by looking at the door things like that and there are also stores that you just don't pay anything um, mm -hmm. in certain countries like you like it just knows you and like it charges you so it's really cool and I always have like this weird thought that like you know it's one of those things that's um advertised like you know like this is for your convenience for your ease but I feel like it can be used in like nefarious ways mm -hmm. um so like what are your thoughts on 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 that um I mean definitely again it's just you know the ethical concerns behind all this right um like how comfortable are you with the usage of your, um, you know, of your face of whatever. Um, 
Because like if it's like a hotel, like, oh, I'm going to open the door of my hotel just by looking at it. That sounds super convenient, but like what else are they going to do with that information, right? Um, so that's, you know, where, where the where the concern begins for me. Like if I were to go to a hotel, like what happens with, with that in the future? I mean, not that mm -hmm. I'm not publishing my face voluntarily to like social media, but still, you know. Mm -hmm. Kakoa, um, you had your you were unmuted for a second. Did you have something to say? Kakoa is really interested in this ethics of data thing, so that's kind of what we're talking about now. Well, I was just going off what I think Vinny said earlier, and I think Rafa, you mentioned that like you might be more okay with it, right, if the government collects it um, versus maybe just private companies using it for monetization. Um, I think also like I know a lot of people have like qualms against Palantir because Palantir is like a private company that sells the data to the government. Mm -hmm. And people have been upset because I think they've used like facial recognition, just like on like data they've collected from cameras and stuff to like, um, like tell the government undocumented immigrants um, or just individuals that like are being watched and the people like and the government knows where they are and what they're doing, which is interesting because, um, yeah, I mean, just like you said, the, the cameras are everywhere and they can now recognize the people mm -hmm. anywhere. Yeah, and again, like something that in the beginning you know it's sold as okay you're gonna have these things that are gonna be able to um spot criminals you know on the street and be like okay here he is that sounds like a cool thing but then you know all this like the one like the, the example with the immigrants that you said like you know they might also be able to you know spot you know good people or whatever um or you know just bring in an, an ethical you know discussion into the table when it comes to, you know, cases like that. Um, so it really is, you know, it's not like a, it's like a gray area here that you're, you're dealing with when it comes to like vision and security, especially. And government as well. Yeah, kind of on that note, um, I think, I know, sorry, Kendall, but I think Amazon opened its like first cashier list store in Seattle so like I went to one yesterday I I, drove, oh. I I literally biked to it um just to look at it to see how it's doing during the pandemic um it was empty and locked down <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they still got your face blast. on the camera they, they broke the <laughs> by this door so that's probably why it was locked down yeah oh man Interesting, interesting um, story there. Um, okay, any more questions or comments and concerns about Rafa's research presentation? And then I, I, it's interesting to me because it's almost like, Jake, you brought us a lot of technical stuff to the table, but now Rafa's technical stuff made us all think like, oh, you know, like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, Jake's was like, wow, this is sweet. And then Ralph is just like, ugh. Yeah. Well, that was like the you know, about, like, the purple person. Like, cool person. Yeah. like what? this color picking to, like, like, that's why I was asking, like, more of, like, I don't know, a generalized question about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was thinking just, like, even incorporating, like, this kind of computer vision into the app um i just just a thought that i had um was you could upload a picture like when you upload your event picture to the app like you know it detects the the color right because i saw that there was like the most like the colors or whatever and then that like automatically becomes like the color scheme for your event um you know what i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> that could be hard. It's, it's double, but it'd be cool. <laughs> but still, you know, it's it's cool to think about like those kind of uh, scenarios where you can like bring, you know, the face facial expression to the interaction of the person with the computer, right? And it's not just like think of an app. Think of like maybe the lights in your room. You know, if you're, if you're just like this, like you just can't see or whatever. Maybe the lights will dim. You know, that's just a you know. A, silly example that I thought about, but just like interaction of technology with you, like it really can be um, improved or made very interesting through computer vision. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
I don't. I just wanted to, you know, leave the leave the note and computer vision very positively because I. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Wow. Rafa, what did you just share? Or not Rafa, Rayon, what did you just share? You shared an open source Git repo? Yeah, like on a more positive note, it was like, just like this guy who made this like app, I guess, still in early access. But basically like if you watch the demo, like he's able to like hold his phone and like, just like take a, not really take a picture of something, but like use his camera and like look at an object and it'll be able to like copy the object and like you can like take your phone, it'll like show it on your phone screen, and, like move oh, your phone to your computer I'm and like watching the, it onto the computer screen. It's like ridiculous. I'm <laughs> watching the demo right now. That is ridiculous. No, he did not just do that. And that was done with React Native and Expo. So like everything we're using, Ooh. that guy was just using. Oh it, my God. That is literally so cool. Huh. Rafa, have you read about or like about like the dress that IBM is made with um with like some fashion company? I think Marquesa it was the name of the fashion company, but basically um the dress it connects to um your I think it's your Twitter or something, and then it and then from that it gauges your emotions and then it changes colors accordingly. So like I guess like everyone just knows like you're happy today because your the dress is purple or like peach or something. So have you read about that? Like I have not, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's also like another positive thing. But then it could be negative because then everyone knows how you're feeling. And yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know if, if if my shirt is red. I don't mind. I'm I'm, I'm wearing red. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. But, Kind of no, cool no, it is cool. It, that is actually really cool. I did not read about that, but that's like pretty cool. All right. Is there any final questions, comments, concerns, etc.? This was a great conversation. Um, I'm probably going to end the recording now if no one else has anything. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh,